Lord God, we give you glory. We give you praise. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that you're the mighty God, the faithful God. We give you praise, Lord Jesus. We ask you, Lord, to be here tonight in a mighty way again, Lord God. Lord, to come in, Lord, to touch our hearts and minds, to let there be a transformation by the renewing of our minds, Lord God. Lord, we praise you, Lord God. We know you're able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we ask or that we think. We give you the praise. Hallelujah. We magnify you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. Good evening. I want to remind you tomorrow night we're going to have a, a board game night. If you have free to come and uh, just enjoy some time with us, have a, eat your dinner at home and bring a snack to share and a little ha-ha button. Oh, ha-ha-ha, this is so fun. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's worship the Lord. He's worthy of our praise tonight. Amen. You're worthy of praise. You're worthy of praise. You're worthy of my adoration. For the rest of my days, your name. you're worthy hallelujah, of our praise tonight. We lift you up. We magnify hallelujah, your name. Lord God, hallelujah, Jesus. You, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. I count on one thing, the 
in the face and say, I will praise God in my circumstances. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Does anybody else have like the driest lips? I cannot get my lips moisturized, so forgive me. Your 
Nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is, oh, nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
There's no king like our king. Jesus, our king. There's no name like his name. There's no name like his name. Every tongue shall proclaim. Every tongue shall proclaim. Jesus, our God. There's no king like our king. Jesus, our king. There's no name like his name. There's no name like his name. Every tongue shall proclaim.
water you turned into wine. You opened the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. And into the darkness you shine. Oh, out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. None turned into wine Lord you've opened the eyes of the blind there's no one like you none like you and into the ashes we shine and out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you none like God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Oh, our God is greater, our God is stronger. And God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our turned into wine you've opened the eyes of the blind there's no one like you none like you and into the darkness you shine and out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you none like Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our What could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? What could stand against? Oh, our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. And if our God then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, what could stand against? What could stand against? Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. You're awesome in power. Our God, our God, our God. 
God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, our God. Hallelujah, there's no one like our God, hallelujah Jesus, hallelujah. hallelujah. There's no Hallelujah. one like our God, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I praise you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God. I love you, Lord God. Hallelujah. You are greater, Lord God. You are greater. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We praise you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just think about that for a moment. If our God is for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. Come on, if you're doing what you know God wants you to do, he's for you. Who can be against you? Hallelujah. Yeah, they'll, they'll come against you, but you're going to win because God's on your side. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. Think about that. Hallelujah. Our God is greater. Come on. He is the only God, the greatest God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, mighty God, faithful God, faithful God, hallelujah. Come on, that's how Elijah did what he did. Hallelujah, I stand in the presence of God. Come on, he knew that God was for him so he could make the proclamations that he made. If you know that God is with you, you can have the proclamations that God has given you. Hallelujah. And it's going to have its effect. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on. Hallelujah. If you're living for him, he's for you. If you're lifting him up, he's for you. Come on. If you're trying to serve him, he's for you. If you're trying to worship him in spirit and in truth, he's for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Think about that. He's a mighty God. He's a faithful God. Hallelujah. Able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we ask or think. Hallelujah. Do you need something from him tonight? He's able to do it. Hallelujah. Come on, if you need an extra touch, he's able to do it. Lord, I need strength to go on. He's able to give that. Lord, I need some direction. He's able and willing to give you that. Lord, I need your touch. He's able to do that. I will not leave you comfortless, he said. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. You may be seated here tonight. Hallelujah. It's not how many, it's is God for you. <laughs> One will put a thousand, two ten thousand. Amen. Praise God. Three ten thousand, three a hundred thousand. You realize three is enough to take Brockton? That's what it means. Three is enough to take Brockton. Hallelujah. Yes, amen. Glory to God. Three is enough to take Brockton. Yep. You got three that are committed. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's give him some more praise. Come on. Lord, we praise you. We worship you. We magnify you, Lord God. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you that you're in the midst of us. We thank you, Lord, that you're able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we ask or think. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, that we're conquerors. We give you the praise. We give you the praise. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. Come on, the Lord is doing great things. We just need to keep into the stream of it. Amen. We just need to keep believing, keep moving. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to ask Brother Stephen to do double duty. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Lord God, I want to thank you for this time in your presence. Lord, that we might seek you and learn of you. As we bring these tithes and these offerings to your storehouse, O oh Lord, pray that you bless it and sanctify it. This gospel message might be spread. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. That, that beautiful baptism we had last Sunday night, and we do apologize for let, not letting everybody know about it. It came up real quick, and we weren't trying to keep people out. It's just that it came up quick, and we were just trying to do it. So, But it was a beautiful baptism. We had a couple more today. Um, Brother Eric Young came from Brockton, and they baptized husband and wife today, and it was beautiful today also. Amen. And so we praise God for that, and good move of God, good move this morning. We'll just believe God. We'll just decide, I want something from the Lord. I want to see God do something and position ourselves to be available to God. God will do something. Amen. Amen. He, he just really, he just needs a willing vessel, a willing vessel. Amen. And if we'll just remove ourselves out of the way, a lot of times we think we have to pray a lot, but a lot of times the praying is just helping us get ourselves out of the way and be willing to let God do it the way he's going to do it. But if you're already in that mindset, then you can just move right into that and God will use you. Amen. Be ready. Be available for the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Well, why don't we stand tonight? Brother Stephen's going to come and bring us the word of God. Everybody say, God bless Brother Stephen Kahn. Let's turn our attention to the Lord one more time. Lord, you are good. I worship you, O oh God. Oh, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, that you might prepare the soil, O oh God. That the seed might fall upon good ground. Oh, Lord God. Anoint my lips with oil, O oh God. Let my words be acceptable in thy sight, O oh God. Oh, yes, Lord. Giving honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Honor to my pastor. Honor to the ministry here. Honor to the saints here. I want to start off in Acts chapter 9. Starting at verses 1 through 9. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined uh, around about a, him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said unto, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him,
and arise and go into the city, and it shall be told what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were open, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was there three days without sight, neither did he eat nor drink. And I want to jump over to verse number 17 through 19. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, hath appeared unto you, thee in the way as thou camest, hath sent me that thou might receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales and had received his sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. And he received meat, he was strengthened, and then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were in Damascus. You may be seated. So reading these scriptures, I began to wonder if Saul had never went to find Ananias. If he had never went to, to Damascus, and if he had went back to Jerusalem, would he have ever received his sight back? In Deuteronomy 8 and 3, it says, And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna which thou knowest not, Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee to know man doth not live by bread only, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. There are things in our life that the Lord allows to happen that we might draw closer to him. But if we don't move forward in Christ... Sometimes we, we stay in that state that he never intended us to, to stay in. Whether it be in our families, our finance, our relationships, even in our mind. He's trying to get us to depend on him. The seventh stage of grief is acceptance. And that's exactly what we do in some of these circumstances. Life gets hard and we just accept it. This is who we are. It becomes our identity. But that it was never what God had intended for us. Saul's blindness was just to get him to see Ananias. God never intended him to stay where he was at, never intended him to move backward. He's just waiting for us to get to an appointed place to receive our healing. Going back to Acts 9, we're going to read 10 through 16. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus, a man named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth. And he seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him that he might receive his sight. Ananias answered the Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil hath he done to the saints at Jerusalem. And there he hath authority from the chief priest to bind all that call upon thy name. And the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. God has great plans for Paul. But his healing is tied up in a street called straight. 
a lot of the miracles that Jesus did is in the Gospels were while he was walking along his path, he met people there. We have to go to where he's at to receive those miracles. Yes, yeah, sometimes people like, like Lazarus God goes to, and that's grace. But sometimes God does require for us to step out in faith to get what we need from him. Hebrews 4 and 16 says, Let us therefore come boldly onto the throne of grace, that we may be, obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. It doesn't tell us to stay where we're at. It says to go boldly to where he's at. In Mark 10, 46 and 52, we read of blind Bartimaeus. And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, it, and a great number of people, and blind Bartimaeus, the son, son of Timos, sat by the highway side begging. And he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, and he began to cry out, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried out uh, a great deal, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he cast, casting away his garment, rose up and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, what wilt thou have that I should do un unto thee? And the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Jesus was leaving Jericho. And Bartimaeus was on the side begging. Bartimaeus was in Jesus' path. But sometimes it takes a little bit more than just positioning to receive something from the Lord. He's so close to you, you can touch him, but yet you can't reach him. So what does he do? Thou son of David, thou son of David. He starts worshiping Jesus. Thou son of David, he's calling him king. He's calling him Messiah. And it stops Jesus in his tracks. And the more he cried out, the more they told him to stop. But just the more he kept doing it. He kept worshiping. And that's what we need to do in our lives. When life beats down on us, that's when we need to start crying out just the louder, Thou Son of David. Because he's moving one way, but when he hears our worship and our cry onto him, he can't help but fix his eyes on us. In Luke 8, verses 40 to 48, we meet the woman with the issue of blood. And it came to pass that when Jesus returned to the people, gladly received them, for all were waiting for him. And behold, there, was, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue and fell at his feet, at Jesus' feet, and besought him that he would come into the, his house. 
for he had only one daughter, a d- and she lay dying. As he went, the people thronged him. And a woman, ha- woman having the issue of blood twelve years, which spent, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could it be healed of any. Came behind him and touched the border of his garment. Immediately her issue of blood staunched, and Jesus said, "Who touched me?" When all denied Peter, and they that were with him said, "Master." The multitude throng thee and press thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And Jesus said, Someone hath touched me, for I perceive virtue has gone out of me. And the woman saw that she was not hid, and came trembling, and fell down before him. And she had declared unto him before all the people which caused, before all the people, for what, what caused she had touched him, and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith had made thee whole. Go in peace. Again, Jesus is now heading to Jairus' house. He's not here for her, but she is along his path. She is within reaching distance to him. She is at rock bottom. She has tried everything and has not received a healing. When Jesus asked, who touched me? Peter's response was, what do you mean? You see the multitude trying to get a hold of you. But only out of everyone that was there, only one person truly grabbed a hold of Jesus. Only one person person truly had faith to believe that Jesus could change her life. In James 1, 6 through 7, it says, But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. There was nothing wavering in her faith that day. He said he'll do it, and I'm standing on it. In Malachi, it says that the son of righteousness would come with healing in his wings. All I may be able to do is just touch the hem of his garment, but that is all I need to receive something. Because he said it. Because his word declares it. And that's enough for me. But too often, a little bit of doubt creeps in. And that's what causes the instability in his life. We hear these great stories of what God has done, but we question, will God do it for me? We need to grab hold of Jesus like this woman and believe in his word. But moving on, to Jairus' daughter now. Continuing on in verse 49, it says, While he yet speak, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying, Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter, James, and John, and the father and the mother of the maiden. And all wept and bewailed her. But he said, Weep not, she is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed at him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. And he put them out, all out, and took her by the hand and called, saying, Maiden, arise. And her spirit again came again, and she arose straightway and commanded to give her meat. And the parents was astonished, but he charged them that they should tell no man of what was done. It wasn't the daughter that came to Jesus. It was Jairus. It was the father. 
sometimes our prayers, when we're reaching out to them, it's not for us. It's for the people around us. They're depending on us to get a hold of the Lord to, for intercession. She was dead and brought back to life. In like fashion, our nation is spiritually dead. And we can all but wonder if we could ever, what would happen if we fell on Jesus' feet like Jairus did for his daughter and asked him to step in for us. We talk about how far gone this country is and I wonder if we could ever go back to the days of Azusa Street. When Jesus got there, they laughed at him to scorn. How can this ever go back to the way it was? But it, all it took was a word from Jesus. He said, arise. And I say the same thing now, that all it takes for this world to turn around is for Jesus to say, arise. All he has to do is speak a word. Even in Jairus' disbelief, those prayers at Jesus' feet were still working. Don't stop praying. Don't stop interceding because it is doing something. Even when it seems hopeless, it is doing something to the atmosphere. Zacchaeus, Luke 19, 1 through 10. And Jesus entered and pressed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before, ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for this day I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he had gone to be a guest of this man is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, the Lord the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restored unto him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to thy house, for so much as he also is the son of Abraham. The son of man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. Zacchaeus had a desire to see Jesus. But it's not just desire, it's action. You see the th this theme begin to appear when you're reading the Gospels. People who got a miracle from the Lord had action behind their desires. And I think a lot of us start off the way Zacchaeus did in this translation, in, in this scripture. I want to see who he is. I want to see what this church thing is all about. But sadly, a lot of people stay on the sidelines and never move forward to pressing into the presence of God. They never experience anything beyond this. It says that he was a chief publican. It must have been ex embarrassing for him to climb up that tree. He might, might have had to drop some, some things to climb up that tree to see him. But because he pressed through just to see him, I must abide in thy house. We have to be willing to push further that God to get a relationship with God. Second Corinthians twelve seven through ten.
and least I shall be exalted above measure, though the abundance of the revelation there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet at me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that I might, it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmities, in the reproach, reproaches in the in necessities, in persecutions, in distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, I am strong. Paul needs a healing and he brings it to God. But the answer is no. I'm not going to heal you. But Paul, because of his relationship with God, he sees this as a benefit because he gains something much more important. In Philippians 3 and 10, in the Amplified, it says this, And this, so that I might know him, exponentially becoming more thoroughly acquainted with him, understanding the remarkable wonders of his person more completely, and in the same way experience the power of his resurrection, which overflows and is active in believers, and that I may share in the fellowship of his suffering by being continually conformed inward into his likeness, even to his death, dying as he did. It's our carrying our cross, the fellowship in our in his suffering, the dying to in the dying to ourselves, we begin to get an experience with God. We begin to be to see his strength. We begin to witness that resurrection power. It's those difficult times that are supposed to draw us closer to God. I'm closing with these thoughts. There is an appointed time and place, but it's all wrapped up where Jesus is at. That scripture for this year, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. When you think about that, he's the treasure in this. And everything else is the byproduct. So if we find out where he is, though, we can get our healing. The Bible says, take my yoke upon you, learn of me. For me to take something, I have to be close to him to grab it. For I am meek and lowly in heart. Ye shall find rest unto your souls. That peace, that healing you're looking for, it's in him. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. The yoke is a tool for farming. And I don't think we can truly start progressing in our lives till we have those experience with that experience with the Lord. Because we're, we're, we're sent to till a field, but if we don't have that yoke, his yoke, we're just running our wheels. Paul is supposed to make his name great upon the Gentiles, but first he has to go see Ananias. He has to go to the place where God is calling him to go. And at this time, I'd like to turn the service over to you, Pastor.